Today, we're doing an actual budget build that you can get for real for under $500. We're gonna build this, then we're gonna do actual tests, and I think you're gonna be very impressed with what we see today on performance. So, first up, i3, the main powerhouse. Very impressed with the power from this i3 specifically. We've got 16 gigs of DDR4, 512 gig SSD. Ah! I don't know why I'm acting like that's heavy, but it felt more impactful if I made that noise. Shut up. Anyways, 500 watt power supply. And also, if you're thinking on a budget build, you can't actually get a gold standard, guess what? You can because this is for real. Then we got this. I've actually seen other people use this. This is a pretty solid go-to motherboard when you're doing a build like this and you're on a pretty strenuous budget. And our case, which I think is the first thing we're gonna dive into, which is the Masterbox Q300L. We'll show the GPU in a second. I don't have a fancy knife, okay? Everyone always has like a fancy knife. I had one, it got really dull on me. I gotta get a new one. Suggestions for a fancy knife down below. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, dude, it's so nice it being small. I'm so used to building in at least like full size, you know? So like. A mini case this is crazy. It feels different. Oh, the big reveal. If you've not seen this case before, especially given the price of this case, it is super impressive. Let's take these over here. Look at this case, man. Look at that. It's sick, dude. You even got like this like dope like mesh design that we're gonna be able to throw on it here. Right now you're like, wait, nano. Let's uh let's get real for a sec. That front, but no. They actually have this like sick design. I'm gonna throw on because I want you to get the full picture for the aesthetic of this case. Wait, that's actually hang on. Peep this. So you can see the design from this side? You can't see it at all from that side. What? I, I don't know why, but I would not have expected that. Anyway, all right, boom. That's pretty dope. Wow, oh, dude, it's so light. Pop into the motherboard here. It should be a fairly simple build too. The last build I did on this channel was not simple at all. So I look forward to doing this one today. <clears throat> look at that. I mean, it's not, it's not like you're not gonna like blow anyone's locks off. I showed on this motherboard, but you actually do get a lot of onboard IO and fun stuff like that. You're going budget for a reason. Still gonna be able to pull the frames. I think we're gonna be very happy to see if we're gonna be pulling with this thing here today. It's a win-win. All right, first up, let's seat our CPU here. Oh no, this is the factory seal. I'm about to break it. Rip. Now, the cool thing about this too, obviously in this build, we have no AIO, we have no special anything like that. It just didn't fit into the budget. But when you buy an i3 like this, it actually does come with its own cooler, which you won't see in some of the higher ends. Save you some money and the cooling will be fine. Yeah, boom. Look at that. I don't know about you, but it's been a long time since I've actually used one that's came with it. But I remember this is, I mean, this is what we just used to use. Maybe you might explore to the huge one. I'm trying to think of what it was called. You can see it right now, but I used to have a build with that one in it. Like it was an actual fan cooler. It was huge. You had that and you're like, okay, this is a build. Let's get our CPU seated here. That popped up so quickly. Holy, take a look at this. Look, we got the i3, beautiful. Boom, in there, easy, done. All right, sick, where do I plug it in? Get going, right? TC Create, 16 gigs, DDR4. It's nothing crazy, but like, it's not like it like looks terrible either. Some of those, when you're going super budget, they don't even put any sort of shielding on it at all. It's light. Boom. And two, boom. 16 gigs of DDR4, just like that. And now we're gonna put our cooler on. So I am gonna go ahead, I'm actually gonna wipe off what came with it. This probably would be okay, but we do have some actual Arctic thermal paste. So I'm gonna just put like a little bead on that. I'm gonna wipe this off. That's what I'm going to personally do. I think if you're following along with this build, you would probably be okay with this, but I would just recommend some actual good thermal paste. I think this is just bounty. I'm waiting, I'm waiting on one of y'all to call me out for doing this, but it's fine. It'll be okay, I promise you. You didn't use a special alcohol wipe to get that clean? The whole build's ruined. We're gonna spread it ourselves. So that way I know it actually goes all over. You're not just trusting it to spread once you put it on there. There we go, ooh, there we go. That's the real stuff. That's why you're here. That's why you liked the video and you subscribed right there. All right, so now we've got fan, CPU, and RAM. We're gonna go ahead and install our SSD as well. Come on, man, what kind of tech channel would I be if I didn't have this kit? You expected it to come out at some point, boom. <laughs> so this is our Gen 3 512 gig SSD. Just gonna pop that in there very easily. Thank you, boom, boom, look at that. Oh my gosh, so much of the build already done. I see you know I'm gonna be installing Apex and Warzone, playing games, like it's my job. Let's go. One of the most important things you can do is keep your workspace clean, right? I know I was making jokes earlier, but for real, this is so light. It still blows my mind that you can't. Anyway, we're not taking that off yet. We gotta earn that, that pill, you know? Okay, all right. Factory putting those in pretty tight, making me work for it. I just realized, did that not come with, there's no way. That definitely has an IO shield, right? Uh, there's definitely one in there, right? <laughs> right? No IO shield. 
The whole build's ruined. There's gonna be one under here, surely. There's no way. Yeah, come on. I was gonna be big sad. It's like, it is kind of whatever, but also like, man, I kind of want the IO shield, please. Heck yeah. We were just talking about this on old build, but like back in the day, everything wasn't just so plainly labeled for your power supply, like switch and your lights and all of that. You could actually do it wrong. And now it's all nice and bundled and labeled. Make it so easy on everybody now, man. I miss the days where there's a little bit of complication to it. I'm kidding, kind of. Not really. It is labeled. That's actually so amazing. It is, yeah. An M, M for micro ATX. Heck yes. I need a bigger screw. Why are you not going in? I messed up the standoffs. I did not shut up, bro. Come on, man. I wouldn't do that, bro. I have a, I have a tech channel. There's no way I would mess up the standoffs, man. Come on. Sick. Let's go. That's everything. Okay. Thermal take. Also, links to everything will be down below. They are affiliate links, just letting you know. They do help the channel by using them. But you'll find links to everything that we picked up today that you can pick up on various sites down below in the description if you want to do this build for yourself. Now, of course, this is not modular. Can't really, at least not at this time of filming this, getting modular is not exactly an option, really, for this price point. The fact that it's actually like an 80 plus gold PSU is uh, pretty, pretty ballin'. That is an interesting design though there. Like offset, let's get it down here. Am I losing my mind? Why did they choose to do that? A very interesting design on this case. Okay, look at that. Interesting. So you screw this onto here and then you put it back in there and screw that onto the case. That is interesting to say the least. I guess that's what we're about to do. Okay, we got this attached. So yeah, it's like recessed in there. So you have to attach it to this and then this will be then attached to the case, so. There we go. Please align. For the love of God, go in the hole. Everything else about the case, great. This design, terrible. You're not gonna believe this. What'd you do? It went in. <laughs> oh my gosh, after years. So I wanted this video to go out in 2022, but it's now 2026. Everybody welcome to the $500 build from four years ago. It went in. I won. More importantly, we won. Oh my gosh. Yes, I've never wanted it to go in that bad in my life. Hey dude, it's working. <sighs> Let's go. Just, we're just opening her up now. I feel like some of these cables should be ran back just to keep it like semi-clean build. There is room in this case, so like, why not? Okay. There's actually a surprising amount of room back there. With that in mind, man, modulars are so nice though. It's making me miss a modular. Let's see, if you're on a budget though, the price differences. It, yeah, 100%. It makes a substantial difference. I've got to go through here. It's got to go all the way up and over and like this. The whole build ruined. There's two more, man. Oh my gosh, yeah, this looks way better. I'm so glad that I realized that I should do that, you know, all on my own. Yeah, that's gonna be way more aesthetically pleasing. Way more aesthetically pleasing? Oh yeah. Actually, a surprising amount of, I mean, I would not put the GPU in there, but like a surprising amount of room in there. I cannot believe this has to be ran over like this, but it, it, it is what it is, it's all I can really do. Boom. The last piece to the puzzle here. The big reveal. Did you guess it? Did you figure it out before I said what this was? So, the powerhouse running this, went with this because you just get more VRAM, just lots of reasons to go for this, but we have us a 1070 Ti powering our $500 build. So we take this off. I'm gonna be left-handed right now. I don't know why I chose this path, but here we are. I'm about to bust Miss Motherboard up in here, bro. All right, boom, we got those done and good to go. But first, we're gonna set this over here. We're gonna do our cables. I'm gonna go all the way down here, that plugged in. We're actually pop this back up and out and bring it through up here. There we go. All right, sick. So I gotta do these, as I mentioned earlier, already are labeled, making life easier now. Is what it is. Man, dude, am I really about to have to run this all the way across? I guess I am. The, the one singular outlet fan that we're gonna have. I think that's the one thing about this build, and I'm like, man, this is actually pretty quick because we're not having to install any fans. There's no fan installation, no AIO installation, like just boom. That looks a little better. All right, the last step, we have to actually put our graphics card in. Here we go. This thing is actually sick. So to, to try this out, boom. We're in. Let me put the backing back on. There we go. Okay. That is an interesting design is what I will say. Yeah, look at that. You only need one power connector. This is awesome. Boom. We're all connected. We're ready to go. 
I just gotta put it all together and then install Windows, play in Warzone. A lot of times on all my builds, I've got like an extra like USB to hook up to all the different fans. You have like additional fan cables you're running. So we don't have any of that really in this build. So there's not a ton going on back there. And also like M2 SSDs have gotten so cheap and a lot of motherboards support like four of them, you know, three, four of them. You don't even need to run SATA cables or anything anymore either. So so many things you don't think about that are like really making the extra cables that would typically be back there. Like they're not there anymore. It's nice. All right, M moment of truth here. GG's, we're working baby. Okay, it's time to actually plug up a monitor, install Windows, and then we're playing games. Okay, so we're totally built, we're ready to get going. I'm gonna take this off because they're literally over where you need to put the screws in, and we're gonna save the nice part here for just a second. There we go, okay, boom. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for, not the power on, it's this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -mm -mm. All right, here we go. Boot up moment. Let's go. Boom. It's on. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Obviously, again, budget build, so we didn't go for things like a bunch of RGB, you know, lights and fans. But you could obviously add those on um, later and all this. Dude, that was a quick boot. Nice little boot time there. Okay. Okay. So let's actually recap what's in this. We've got an i3 12100F. That is a four core CPU for like a hundred dollars. Eight threads. Going to be super impressed with the performance today. We have 16 gigs of DDR4. We have a 1070 Ti, which actually gives us eight gigs of VRAM, which is why I went for that model specifically. We have a 500 watt power supply. So we actually do have some room for expansion later. If you wanted to upgrade, you actually have that ability. And that's pretty much the main notable features. Obviously, again, we have a 512 SSD, which is why the boot was so fast. Fast. Let's dive in. Let's do Horizon Zero Dawn. New, looks great. Look at that. Dude, 70 plus frames right now? What? Okay. Uh, all right, so obviously the important part, settings, where are we at? So we are playing in 1080. We're about to see what we can do in 2K. I went ahead and set it to original. Okay, let's see if we, we bump this up to 2K, what do we get? Okay, we're actually still pulling over 50. We could definitely adjust some settings and get this back up over 60 in 2K if we really wanted to. Okay, so we're loading in 1080p because literally war is on 2.0. We're sitting on the balanced quality preset. I'm not changing anything because I'm not trying to like totally game the system, optimize you know, the system here. I just want to see what we can get. You're coming in at just some nice base values here. How did I miss? Well, we're pulling 70, 80 frames? Hang on, wait, this looks good. Dude, I'm super impressed right now. Playing Warzone 2.0, 70 to 80 frames on a $500 build on PC. And if you're like, but I can do this on a console, yeah, but this is also a PC. You can do other stuff, edit videos, school work, emails, watch YouTube videos like this one. Still dropping in, getting over 60. I I'm decently impressed with that. Still pulling 80 plus right now, 90? Still 70 plus rendering all the way back out there. Okay, well, there you go, Warzone 2. 60 plus frames, 70 plus frames on our $500 build here. The PC itself is staying pretty quiet. Temps aren't bad. Again, obviously you could add more fans you could add you could add more cooling for not you know much more 100 frames in the gulag bro that's where it matters anyway man all right we're getting 90 frames right now 1080p fortnite 94 93 there's also something about this game that i will definitely say my first drop every time is a little like hiccupy even on my like main build so some like frame drops never really surprise me until you like actually dive in also if you have suggestions for games we should try out on this 500 dollars pc build let me know down below in the comment section and i will turn them into shorts so yeah. I don't know how you're gonna wear a game. All right, jumping from the tower and having to load all of this and still pulling 60 plus is, is good for this game, by the way, in case anyone was wondering. <gasps> I forgot Rocket League was in this game. Hang on, wait. Oh, dude, this is actually cool. What? What? Dude, that is, <laughs> that's actually kind of cool. Wait a second. Plenty of frames, looking good. That's Fortnite. We're playing it in 1080 right now, and then I've got it set to custom. So we actually have view distance on Epic, because I feel like that's one of the most important things. And we actually are playing on high shadows, high textures, high post processing, high effects. Actually, decently high settings. The game looked great, and we were pulling tons of frames. So there you go, Fortnite, $500 build. Okay, so obviously we've got to do Cyberpunk. It's a $500 build, can it run Cyberpunk? You know what I mean? So I went to custom, we've got texture quality set to high. This can obviously not do DLSS because it's a GTX 1070 Ti. And everything else mostly set to medium here. So we are gonna be playing in 1080p. Let's see what we got. Wait, are we getting like basically 60 frames right now? We're getting, we're going over 60 frames right now. And this looks good. 
<laughs> well, there you go. Cyberpunk, 1080p, mixture of, of high slash one high setting and then rest like medium. Actually more than playable, getting over 60 frames per second. So there you go, the $500 build, yes, it does run Cyberpunk 2077. And in case you're curious about temps, we're actually staying under like six degrees Celsius here, again, with the stock cooler, and that was just after getting out of Cyberpunk. So there you go, this is our $500 budget PC build running plenty of stuff incredibly well. So I'm super impressed with it. I hope you guys were too. A link to everything that went into this build down below. One little caveat here for the specific motherboard I picked up, does not have Wi-Fi, so we are hardwired in. So that could be an easily fixed the Wi-Fi adapter or the upgraded version of the motherboard, but that's the one that we went with. Just thought I'd leave that little caveat there. And of course, again, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button if you're new, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.